Hey guys, welcome back to Auto Repair guys. Thank you guys for watching and subscribing to the channel. Today will be super helpful video to any of you having a Hyundai or Kia guys uh, with a 2.4 GDI engine and you need to uh, remove or replace guys uh, connecting rod, piston. Stay with us, we'll explain how to do that. If you're replacing cylinder uh, connecting rod or piston on cylinder 1, 2 and 3, it's way easier than replacing on cylinder number 4 and we'll explain why. Make sure to stand till the end. Before we start, let me tell you a little bit about us. Every single car we get at the garage, uh, we try to make at least two to 300 free repair videos. Why we do that? Simply because our mission in the shop is to save you as much money as we can. All we need in return, please subscribe to the channel, like the video. That way we can keep making these absolutely free videos. Now, if you need to buy any parts, tools for a good price and quick shipping, check out the link in the description of the video below. That's where we get all our tools and supplies from. Now, uh, it will take quite a bit of work, guys, okay, to get to that point. We will need to remove timing chains, cylinder heads, all that stuff in order to get the connecting rod. Uh, and uh, piston out so uh, stay with us we'll start on that and then we'll continue with the next step and show you what exactly needs to be done to actually uh, do all that it will require okay it will require some serious work so let's go ahead start on it be prepared it will take a long time but it will be step-by-step -step instruction that will teach you how to do that now so in order to remove the oil pan we need to remove the lower bolts on the AC compressor with a 12 millimeter so, so let's go ahead and do that Okay, one bolt is extremely, extremely tight, so we'll need to break it loose, okay, with a ratchet, and then we should be able to get it out. Let's go ahead, see if we can do that. Maybe use the impact so we can save a little bit of time. Everything happens quicker. Okay, so we don't need to waste your time, guys, so we can just get to the repair. Now, <coughs> that bracket right here for the AC compressor needs to come out. You can see that bracket, because it's holding actually the open, and there is hidden bolts underneath it that you cannot access. So with the same 12 millimeter socket, I believe we have three or four bolts. Okay, let's see where exactly they are located. That's bolt number two. Then we have bolt number three. And after that, guys, we're getting to bolt number four and the whole bracket will come off. Perfect. Now, that bracket, as you can see, there is actually even more hidden bolts now underneath. And there are two bolts that are with a 12 point socket, 12 millimeter, 12 point socket. I'm talking about this bolt here and the bolt right there. They're actually for the crankcase. So they're extremely long bolts that you need to uh, apply a uh, uh, certain torque later. Okay, let me, let me focus quick. I couldn't focus. Uh, this is a 12 point socket. That's what it looks like. Uh, you have to be careful not to strip them. I would never recommend to use impact with a 12 point socket. Okay, never use a 12 point socket impact. Okay, this is actually 13. We got a 13 because it can strip them. But uh, also you have to be extremely careful. So I will recommend, okay, to do it by hand because 12 points with the impact, the impact uh, actually generates more torque and uh, that can strip them guys all of a sudden. Okay, perfect. One's out. You can see pretty long board. Now number two coming out as well. After that, we're pretty easy, guys. We have uh, a few bolts, probably 10, 12 bolts. We'll see uh, with 10 millimeter socket. Okay, that we need to remove. So let's go ahead. Start on that. I'm going to do my best to show you where they're located. They just fall in the bucket that we have there and we'll get them. Now one of them is extremely, extremely tight again. So we need to pre-loosen that one. Okay, let's see if it's going to take care now. Okay, perfect. That's great now. Let's see where else we have bolts. On the back side right there. Okay. Trying my best to show you where they are. All right. 
now right here as well and we go from here and we just keep going keep going now that oil pan should be stuck with silicone but this one was recently removed it wasn't resealed but when you remove the bolts it may be stuck and you may need to use a screwdriver and there is a spot where you can pry right here if you accidentally bend it okay you can straighten the open later because it's all made out of metal so the open comes out okay you can see it just like that uh, now that's the silicone right here let us show you that's the silicone right here we'll get the silicone that you need to use but uh, if you have an oil leak or every time you remove it you need to clean everything really good okay really good the open uh, uh, get a scraper clean it with the scraper make sure there is absolutely no uh, glue silicone anything like that uh, then clean it with rubbing alcohol to make sure that it's not greasy the same thing needs to apply to the engine block you need to clean everything super good guys and you're going to apply three to four millimeter bead of silicone uh, uh, the gray gasket maker is amazing for that whoever used the black one i don't like it the gray one is the original one that it's used and you're going to apply three to four millimeter bead on the inside of the bolts okay and you're going to install it some people go around the bolts too you can a little bit that's uh, that's good as well i mean you can just go a little bit around the bolts if it comes out later while it's still soft just wipe it and you won't be able even to tell that there is silicone but you can see oil pan came out just like that so next we'll be removing the uh, valve cover here for the valve cover we need to disconnect the ignition coils pull the safety out and just disconnect them pretty simple procedure guys you can see just like that same thing okay to cylinder number three and four respectively uh, we have the fuel uh, volume sensor on the high pressure fuel pump if it doesn't want to come out just pull that thing grab the connector push it in then release it okay okay it comes out because it gets stuck we need to remove the fuel line always have fire extinguisher on the side uh, fuel resistant gloves eye protection you will spray some fuel when you remove that avoid sparks flames anything like that right you don't want to catch yourself on fire so perfect this one came out now let's go ahead okay remove the high pressure fuel pump next so a little bit on each side not all at seven and right here is the camshaft follower also known as a cam bucket or camshaft tap it or different names that i would recommend to actually inspect and replace because those do fail sometimes and it can destroy your engine as well so let's go ahead put it in okay now uh, next thing we'll remove okay let's remove the ignition coils next okay to remove all the ignition coils here we're going to remove that mount okay we drop the ball we have to be careful for the wiring harness and then we will do the ignition coils we can go ahead and flip the wiring harness on the side now those ignition coils they have bolts with 10 millimeter socket <coughs> excuse me now we can easily grab each one of those pull them up okay it comes out just like that now uh, that valve cover attaches with uh, 20 or 22 bolts i don't remember exactly how many but it's quite a bit we have a special video about the torque specs later and what you need to do to make sure you don't have oil leaks uh, where you need to even though you're putting a new gasket every time you remove it you still need to apply a little bit of silicone at two places otherwise you will develop leaks so we'll go ahead start getting the bolts loose preferably okay not to drop them i'll just go ahead behind and pick them okay when you're in the car guys take your time okay be careful because it just uh, it's not worth it to drop bolts and start hunting for them for 20 minutes it's a special bolt and you cannot replace it with another one 
two more around the oil pump housing uh, the uh, fuel pump high pressure fuel pump right here you have four more bolts that are kind of like in the middle one of them is a little bit hidden you may not see it from the oil cap so go ahead do those all right so let's go ahead pull that cover up okay that line will come a little bit out of the way and the valve cover okay came out now uh, this is uh, the gasket here for the spark plugs outer gasket as well uh, every time it's recommended to replace that gasket we have a special video about the torque specs for the valve cover so let's continue with the next step now so next the timing cover okay why we need to remove the oil pan you can see first because uh, oil pan is actually on top of the timing cover it has the bolts here as well next we need to pre-loosen the water pump okay uh, the water pump pulley bolts pre-loosen them before you remove the belt that way uh, when you remove the belt you will actually have the bolts pre-loosen because otherwise the pulley will be uh, will be spinning freely and you will not be able to remove it now uh, practically i'll go ahead okay recommend to just get them loose to where they go by hand but we'll just use the impact so we don't waste your time guys so we can go ahead and do that quickly now but you can see that's why you need to do it first now let's remove that pulley perfect why we need to remove it because we have a few bolts that we cannot access underneath right here we need to remove okay that's a hardware pulley let's go ahead and remove that one now 14 millimeter socket this one is normal threaded you go counterclockwise now we need to remove the tensioner pulley this one is reverse threaded okay so we need to get a 14 millimeter okay and let's go ahead okay and do it perfect you can see how that one is reverse threaded because otherwise you go counterclockwise to uh, release the pressure so we can install the belt here in our case it's 17 millimeter that we need to get uh, this is uh, because you need to come out because there is a hidden bolt underneath as well let's do that you will need to have the engine really well supported under the car because you will not have the passenger engine mount. We'll have a special video that explains how to replace passenger engine mount on Hyundai Sonata. So if you need help, please feel free to check it out. Now, let's go ahead and remove the mount for the uh, engine, uh, the bracket for the engine mount. So those are 14 millimeter bolts, one of them, somebody installed the wrong type of bolt, whoever worked on that car last time, either it stayed somewhere for a long time and they lost bolts or they had no idea what was happening guys, I think combination of both, which sometimes that's why I prefer to work on my own vehicle so I know what the problem is. Crankshaft pulley now, in order to remove the crankshaft pulley there is a special tool that you use actually to install, okay, on the transmission bell housing right there you see that hole here and you remove that board there it goes and locks the flywheel in the teeth guys or you can do it through actually through the starter hole as well you can do that as well you have two bolts there that you can uh, use as well so with that being said now okay let's uh, let's explain something now guys uh, we used air compressor and an impact this is the impact that we use air compressor is very small but super powerful compressor this one here oh excuse me 165 psi only six gallon but it's able to do jobs like that usually with ease okay only one time we had a hard time removing one board with it but usually it does it great if you have uh, that linker so rent really good uh, really good powerful impact so ours is pretty loosened so all we have to do just remove now the bolt pretty simple let's do that and we should be able to remove the pulley now okay let's grab it perfect now right here let's explain what we have specifically we need to start let's start with the 12 millimeter bolts first this one you don't need to remove okay that's the only one that you don't in some cases maybe on some engines you do but on this one you don't you don't need to worry about that one okay i want to okay let's remove these two and uh, i want to just remove that one to see it's a short bolt but i want to show you okay what you can see through it 
because somewhere there should be the tensioner okay let's see what's here okay that's the tensioner you can install now guys okay the thing for the tensioner practically you can access the uh, timing chain tensioner okay to see it okay and to adjust it if you need to but it's uh, nothing major now because it's self adjusting hydraulic tensioner now right here 10 millimeter and we're going to go ahead do all this okay that's what we're doing now let me make it maybe make one good intro picture so you can get the idea when you guys click on that video where we're working kind of like that it fits on sonata now that let, let me explain something you can get penetrating spray okay oil penetrating oil. i'll put the link in the description of the video below apply on that guide here that's super rusty and one right there let it soak while you're working on all that and then re-soak them again you will have rust and that will make the cover to come out hard and if you pry too much that can easily crack it's super thin and we've done that in the past and they're expensive to replace you have two prying spots one here one over there and then i think you have one on the bottom here and one over there so you have four prying spots that you need to actually go a little bit at a time because it will be resealed it will have silicone and it will not come out easy but you can see timing cover came out now that timing cover used the same silicone as the one for the oil pan that we show you the gray gasket maker right there but you need to clean later everything really good okay really good uh, clean the engine block as well clean the timing cover uh, clean it on the bottom where the oil pan will be uh, actually contacting the timing cover you need to use degreaser i recommend maybe rubbing alcohol clean everything good and the block as well where they will be contacting apply later when you put it together about two three millimeter bead of silicone and reseal everything if you do it wrong you have an oil leak from the timing cover but it came out and you can see here is the timing chain and all the internals of the engine for the next step guys okay for the timing chain removal i will recommend to remove all the spark plugs put a screwdriver you're going to turn okay the crankshaft and make sure that all pistons come in the middle okay not one to be high one to be low so we're going to okay now this is tdc point this is all the way low check it out now i'm going to go to the one that's tdc let's turn it okay turn 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 and i'll show you there is a trick actually check on all four cylinders okay and that's it in the middle so if something goes bad you're not going to bend valves if you look at the pulley okay that key right here when it's on the left side that's tdc point okay when guys okay that key is at 90 degrees angle okay you're actually going to have all pistons in the middle because when it's to the left cylinder number one and four are up when it's to the right cylinder number two and three are up put in the middle everything will be leveled and you can actually see that kind of like through the hole here as well okay for the pistons in some cases too now that way we don't need to worry about okay anything else now for the timing chain if you're removing it replacing it i always recommend to replace the oil pump as well some people just replace the tensioner uh, the tensioner arm and the guy which is still okay because there will not be too much wear but in case you need help with that who we'll explain how to do the oil pump chain because many people make a mistake they'll try to remove that pulley and then you need to buy a brand new oil pump assembly with a balance shaft because everything will be out of balance never remove that uh, uh, that uh, gear there as well so now we can remove the tensioner let's go ahead do that all right perfect we're going to pull it out <coughs> excuse me next uh, we're going to get actually 10 millimeter remove the tensioner arm it will come out just be careful not to break anything i would recommend to always install everything new but nothing to fall anywhere that you don't want it to three on the tensioner guide right there perfect okay you can see that's out of that handy sunala right here guys okay now let's go ahead okay and explain what else we need to do at that point you can grab that timing chain okay and you can pull it out okay you can see the bottom one comes out on the top as well and this is the timing chain now the lower one how you do that let's explain that okay pretty pretty simple now i want to 
So we get where we were. Okay. So if you uh, look at it, the lower one. Okay. First, no, right here. We need to remove everything on top. Timing chain guide, tensioner arm, and uh, we need to remove the uh, tensioner itself which this one is not hydraulic it's spring loaded it will shoot out so be careful there will be a spring and the piston itself okay because it just spring loaded it's not a hydraulic tensioner you can see all the gunk here that's stuck as well so let's go ahead remove that one now just 10 millimeter socket perfect and <laughs> later okay we need to remove this one and now if you try to remove that chain it will not come out guys okay it will not come out it's not long enough if you try to pull that socket it will not come out because the chain is short again okay i'll try my best it doesn't work so what you need to do you need to remove the oil pump and balance shaft assembly and that's with 12 point socket okay the 12 point socket is the one that we use for the oil pan 12 millimeter there is a specific torque specs when putting it together so we'll share that in the timing chain installation video you need a big tool like that because those will be actually pretty pretty tight okay uh, so just be prepared that it will require quite a bit of force guys to do that let's go ahead remove the bolts remember that oil pump and uh, timing chain uh, excuse me balance shaft oil pump and balance shaft assembly is pretty heavy on the last bolt you need to really hold it good otherwise okay it can okay it can fall on you and smash you and break your head guys that's probably not to say big word, but it's probably close to 10 pounds i don't know so we're removing the bolts some of them are long some of them are shorter So check it out, that's what we're doing now. Perfect. Now on the last one. Oh, we missed one somewhere, let's see. Yep, we missed one, I see it. Right there, <laughs> the most inconvenient one. Okay, now we grab that. It's going to come out in an angle. And then you can pull it out and later okay we have a special video that explains how to put everything together timing chain marks and timing chain installation on Hyundai Sonata now you can even pull that gear if you need to it comes out as well okay for the timing chain on the oil pump so that's how we got everything out of here now so next step that we need to do we need to remove the uh, direct fuel injection pump housing three bolts with 12 millimeter socket that's all we have to do we will go ahead remove it okay it may be a little bit stuck because it goes in two metal guides or maybe three right here you can see where it attaches now uh, first thing we need to remove the caps for the camshaft we need to remove them okay we need to do it by hand we need to remove them in specific order otherwise you can damage things and you need to install them exactly in the same order that you remove them let's say this one is from here that's where it needs to go so get a box and line everything where it's supposed to even mark them if you have to with paint on top with something scratch them and say one uh, let's say after this one one two three four intake uh, one two three four exhaust so later you can install them exactly the same location now we're going to go ahead okay go to the next one now towards the very end step number three go to right here step number four over there Step number five will be the last ones. A little bit on each side will be recommended. Perfect. Now we need to remove them exactly in the same order that they come. So we'll grab them. Okay, perfect. One came out. Now we're going to get another one.
and then we'll be almost ready to remove the camshafts guys just two more caps two more bearings and they should come out you grab the camshaft and intake exhaust come out of here you can see just like that so next for the cylinder head removal we need to remove the fuel injectors have fire extinguisher on the side avoid sparks open flames have fuel resistant gloves i would not recommend quad gloves eye protection you have uh, pressure and fuel here leaking out of the fuel rail we have our one or uh, ours already pre-drained so that's okay now the fuel injectors right here you see they have that safety locks okay these gray things need to come out gently pull them out uh, once you do that okay okay no right there once you do that let me show you what you need to do right here you uh, grab the connector push it in then press down and disconnect it okay because it may be stuck here okay it's the knock sensor here is the oil pressure sensor we're going to go ahead disconnect that one as well so let's do that and next we need to remove these three bolts okay let's go ahead do that now so fuel rail will come out you have fuel leaking make sure you have a rack to collect all that one bolt fell out okay let me see if i can okay gravity fell came out injectors are here uh, you can remove them sometimes they may be stuck so wiggle them a little bit and pull at the same time they will eventually come out every time you remove those i would recommend to put new seals here and here as well so make sure okay that you actually do that if you're removing the fuel injectors next step we need to disconnect camshaft position sensor for the intake side the one for the exhaust side need to come out right here we have one connector okay one clip that we need to disconnect this one if you press the two pieces on the back side together it will come out it just takes a little bit of patience and practice to do all these clips guys and wiring harness as well now the thermostat housing needs to come out of the cylinder head here guys we'll have a few things okay uh, so this is the thermostat housing the thermostat housing attaches to the cylinder head with three bolts uh, two bolts and one nut one bolt here okay let's go ahead do that one quick okay 12 millimeter let's go ahead do that now we have one more nut okay that's actually right here and this one is under okay let me show you where it is right here that's a nut actually you need to access it from underneath and unfortunately we need to get a long extension okay longer extension to be able to do that uh, or you need to get a wrench it works too if you get a 12 millimeter wrench you can remove it from right there that's the nut you can see where it attaches to that bolt on the cylinder head so let's see if we can actually remove it with the extension now perfect okay i just show it right here guys that's the nut okay we have one more bolt that we need to remove the other bolt is uh, located let me just collect them here it's located right here under the wires this wire okay here you push up on one okay this one you push down but this one's broken it will come out of the clip and if you look at it that's where the third bolt is it's a little bit hidden every time you remove that uh, uh, thermostat housing replace the gasket that's a weak spot guys very very weak spot so let's go ahead do that so here if you look now we have the coolant pipe going to the uh, water pump that will be stuck so we need to kind of like grab the pipe too and wiggle 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 okay and the thermostat housing comes out you can see just like that perfect now all that is out that's the gasket that i will recommend to have replaced because otherwise two gaskets you will develop leaks there in the future now what else we need to do let's explain that thing now so next we need to remove the bearing right here that's for the camshaft okay so be very gentle not to damage it but gently okay pry it up 
it will come out because here we have a hidden bolt okay that we need to remove let me get that contamination out triple socket triple square socket excuse me it's called a triple square i'll put the link in the description of the video below where you can get it from triple square m12 socket so we'll start with bolt number one right here let's go ahead do that now it will be extremely tight so you might need to hold it with the foot a little bit if it's unless it's on a stent or anything like that perfect we'll pre-loosen that one we go to bolt number two right here and that's the second one the, it matters which uh, way you remove a head gasket and cylinder head otherwise you can rub the cylinder head gas people don't know that they think it matters which way you install it but you just uh, remove remove it as well so i'm going to hold the engine quick here bolt number two let's go to bolt number three right here okay i believe that one was the next one three that's right so i'm holding the engine perfect bolt number four right there Perfect. Bolt number five here. Okay, you just uh, have to be careful now. Uh, we go to bolt number six over there. Okay, we're working on that one now. Bolt number seven over here now. Now, next step will be bolt number eight over here. Okay, that's tight. Then we have bolt number nine that we need to do there. And after that, we just have one more bolt left, which will be bolt number 10 over there. Let's go ahead, do that now. Perfect. Next, <coughs> let's go ahead. Remove all the bolts since they're pre-loosened. At that point, it doesn't matter the order of removal. Eight of the bolts have pressed in washers, two of them. Uh, eight of the bolts have pre uh, actually loose washers and two of them have a pressed in washer. So, eight of the bolts, the washer will come with the bolt, I think. Yeah, that's right, eight have pressed in washers. So, eight bolts, when you remove them, the washer will stay on the bolt, just like this one. Let me show you now. This is the washer okay right there and two will have loose washers and we will explain how to remove those as well when you replace the bolts uh, when you replace head gasket cylinder head anything like that every time you remove cylinder head you need to install new bolts and uh, these two are the one with the loose washers you need to make sure that you install the, the, old, the new washer as well because the old washer will have different friction okay perfect this one's there as well now let's do this one exactly the same way as well okay this one got stuck okay so uh, we need to <laughs> see where exactly it fell towards the back now if we turn the cylinder head upside down all the valve lifters will fall so what we'll do we'll actually put the camshaft with only two caps on each side okay maybe one here okay or maybe we can do the big one here and one on each side so that way okay uh, uh, we're not going to get them tight enough to the to torque specs just a little bit uh, because you always need to lubricate everything really good when you put it together so even when you're putting it like that I'll recommend to lubricate all the bearings again and uh, just go ahead and install them so just the things cannot fall okay you can see no torque at all that's perfect okay let's do two little ones on the back 
exactly the ones that are supposed to be there and that way we can remove the cylinder head and the cylinder head gasket without dropping the valve lifters so let's let's actually do that perfect so we're going to get okay we're going to get 10 uh, 10 millimeter socket and just get those tight a little bit and uh, at that point okay you gotta make sure the coolant is drained on your car when you remove to remember the uh, thermostat housing i forgot to mention but you need to have the coolant drain and later when you put everything together don't just add coolant you need to bleed the cooling system because if you don't bleed the cooling system you can severely overheat your engine so now we're going to get the cylinder head pick it up okay it should come up right here it's a little bit stuck perfect it comes out okay let's uh, lift it up again so i can get the gasket out never leave it on the book or we'll be rebuilding that engine but you can see cylinder head and cylinder head gasket came out now to put it together guys and the cylinder head gasket torque specs and timing chain installation videos for hyundai sonata will be on our channel how to okay install timing chain and cylinder head gasket torque specs and bolt sequence that video will be on our channel as well also we have a special video that explains the symptoms of pet cylinder head gasket and cylinder head as well so now for the piston guys okay good news and bad news if you need to replace piston on cylinder one two and three you can do it now okay pretty simple in the car piston number four <laughs> it will be complicated why because actually guys for piston number four you cannot access it without okay removing the bottom crankcase which can be okay uh, requiring quite a bit of work we have a special video that explains that how to do that on a hyundai a one trap but you can see that bottom crankcase okay right here it comes in two pieces practically you can see where the two pieces are together okay right there that part it separates from this one in order to get to the main bearings and all the pistons but in order to remove that one now okay what you need to do you need to go ahead guys okay and remove bolts in order to do that at that point i recommend to have the engine out of the vehicle out of the transmission so you can do it here you will need to if you need to remove that piece you will need to actually remove the ac compressor the alternator remove the bracket that holds everything together here you will need to remove the uh, oil cooler housing as well uh, because all that will be there guys and uh, later you need to remove all the bolts okay and that piece will come out okay you just have a few more bolts left it will come out and uh, you practically will be able okay to see your crankshaft and your pistons but if you just uh, let's say you have bad connecting rod on cylinder number uh, band connecting rod or anything like that on cylinder number one two and three you can do it all you have to do turn the engine bring the connecting rod okay down here okay you can see we're going to do it like that uh, we're going to get a 12 millimeter 10 millimeter 12 point socket excuse me 10 millimeter 12 point socket okay uh, that socket seen better days make sure you get, get a good quality socket because you don't want to actually strip those guys so uh, we will go ahead okay do that now and uh, remove get the bolts loose on the piston we have the torque specs for those okay for connecting rod bearing torque specs we'll put it on the channel so go ahead do the second one perfect now uh, if you need to uh, remove guys okay replace crankshaft you still need to remove the bottom crankcase piece okay perfect now second one out that piston okay now that piston bearing cap okay should come out it might be tight okay it came out usually grab it with fingers that's the uh, bottom bearing okay right here okay you can see uh, there uh, you cannot install it the wrong way because practically they're uh, kind of like broken so it fits exactly where it's supposed to okay and now uh, the other bearing okay we can push the piston up a little bit and the other bearing will come out 
okay right there that's the bearing okay that's out and now what we can do now guys okay let me uh, get something to wipe my hands with in a second now you can uh, push the connecting rod with a screwdriver or something be careful not to damage the crankshaft but in our case we'll turn it a little bit it will make sure it's in the bearing there slowly okay piston will come up a little bit more okay right there that's TDC point so now what we need to do at that point okay we need to get something okay to actually push it with and again be careful not to damage anything okay and it comes out okay it's almost almost there guys so I'm going to go ahead turn the engine a little bit okay perfect just like that okay we turn the engine that's the connecting rod there we're going to tap on it okay it's coming out it just has a lip here from all the uh, actually from all the carbon build up in the cylinder so let's go ahead keep doing that okay almost there okay that's it right here guys this is the piston with the connecting rod now <laughs> the rings i recommend to bring the, the piston down and just gently clean here okay the uh, carbon build up because there is quite a bit now the rings actually removed most of it so uh, be careful guys that piston started okay uh, wearing out and eventually it will develop a, a little bit of piston slap i can see down there as well so uh, definitely guys okay that car engine will need to be uh, rebuilt with new pistons new bearings new crank uh, uh, the uh, crankshaft resurface with bigger bearings as well but that's how you guys remove piston if you need on cylinder one two and three cylinder four okay we need to remove the crankshaft the bottom crankcase will need to come out and we have a video that uh, explains how to do that on hyundai air wonder so please check it out thank you for watching and see you next time